<clears throat> we turn now to Republican Senator Dan Sullivan of Alaska. Good morning and good to have you here in good studio. Good morning, Margaret. Good to be here. Thanks. You have said the U.S. is in the midst of one of the most dangerous times since World War II. We just yes. heard from the House Intelligence Committee chairman saying it is imperative to get this aid to Ukraine. They run out of ammunition soon. Yeah. Are you confident Republicans can deliver this? Well, look, I voted for the supplemental, and I voted for the supplement, the national security supplemental. And I did for a couple of reasons. The first one is what you just said, Margaret, which is this is a new era of authoritarian aggression. We got the dictators all around the world, Xi Jinping, Putin, Iran, the Ayatollahs in Iran, North Korea. They are working together. We need a strategic response to that. It's a very dangerous time. Second, the Biden administration, with regard to national security, has not been serious. They cut the defense budget every year, inflation-adjusted cuts. By the way, Secretary didn't mention it. They cut Homeland Security every year, too. Those are the two areas this administration consistently cuts, weakens our Homeland Security, weakens our defense. Mm -hmm. But this aid should be much more, um, in terms of how we talk about it, uh, in terms of the supplemental. It's less a foreign aid package and more a package about rebuilding our own, our own industrial capacity to, right. to build weapons for ourselves. Mitch 60... McConnell talks about that, yeah. but it's your fellow Republicans in the House who seem skeptical because well, the Democratic votes are there. Part, part of the reason I'm, I'm on your show today is to talk about it because 60 percent of this supplemental, and look, it's not a perfect bill. The House can make it better. 60 percent goes into our ability to build weapons for America. Everything from nuclear subs, by the way, almost 40% of our attack subs mm -hmm. are in maintenance right now. We don't have the industrial capacity to protect ourselves. Xi Jinping is scared to death of American subs. This supplemental unlocks $6 billion for our sub capacity to build subs, $5 billion to produce uh, 155 millimeter how it surrounds in everything in between, javelins, um, stingers, uh, tomahawks. So this is about our industrial capacity pr to protect America first. And then, of course, we need to get some yeah. of these weapons to our allies who are facing existential threats, whether it's Taiwan, Israel, and Ukraine. And I think when you talk about it from that perspective, it should unite Republicans, not divide them. Um, I imagine it would help if Donald Trump endorsed this package. Mm -hmm. He hasn't done it. Um, here's what he said last night at a rally in Richmond about Vladimir Putin. Putin, you know, has so little respect for Obama that he's starting to throw around the nuclear war today. You heard that nuclear. He's starting to talk nuclear weapons today. Uh, I was waiting for that to happen. But uh, we have a fool, a fool as a president. He said, we will never leave until there is complete and total victory. <laughs> we might be there for a long time. Um, I know you have endorsed Mr. Trump. He seemed there to confuse Biden for Obama. He also suggested that there were U.S. troops serving in Ukraine. Are you comfortable about his mental fitness? Yes, yes. Compared to the current president, 110 percent in as your polling shows, I think the American people have real concerns where President Biden is with regard to his um, fitness for office, particularly his mental acuity, and uh, relative to President Biden or re relative to former President Trump. I don't even think it's a close call when you see the two in action. But to be clear, there are no U.S. troops serving on the battlefield in Ukraine. There are military advisors. There aren't troops, correct? No, but I mean, look. I mean, the other thing that okay, and, that, and, some within your party believe that. And well, that I was mean, what he suggested I, there. I, I would again, I would go back to um, who is demonstrating more mental fitness to be the president. And I don't even think it's a close call between President Trump and President Biden right now. You recently retired after 30 years in the Marine Corps. Did. Jim Mattis, um, you know him well. I do. Reti retired and revered general wrote in his resignation letter from the Trump administration, he had to leave because of a difference of views on treating allies with respect and being clear-eyed about competitors. Yeah. John Kelly, also retired Marine Corps general who served with Mr. Trump, described him as a person that has no idea what America stands for, has no idea what America is all about, a person who admires autocrats and murderous dictators. That's a, a stunning assessment from two people who served alongside him as to the values 
of Donald Trump. Why do you think he represents your vision for America? Well, I think one of the things, and look, I respect General Kelly and uh, Secretary Mattis tremendously. I think the key, though, Margaret, is to look at the record and the record of what uh, the Trump administration working with Republicans did in terms of foreign policy was dramatically stronger and focused on our allies than certainly the Obama administration, the Obama-Biden administration. And let me just give you a couple examples. You remember why Mattis resigned? Oh, I do remember why, that my, had why, directly why to Mattis resigned. I mean, I'll give you an example. In terms of Russia, uh, particularly, you remember President, Biden, uh, President uh, the, the Biden, um, Oba Obama-Biden administration was providing them MREs right. after the invasion of Crimea. What did the Trump administration with Republican support do? We got them javelins. Mm -hmm. We Lethal significantly, significantly bolstered, significantly American troop presence in the Baltics and in Poland, which the Obama administration refused to do. We dramatically increased American defense spending. The, se the second term of the Obama administration Obama Biden cut defense spending by 25 percent. They wrecked readiness. I'm the uh, ranking member on the readiness subcommittee on armed services. Mm -hmm. Trump and the Republican Senate, uh, we brought re military readiness back and we unleashed another element of American power, and that's American okay. energy. So these are all strong elements of the yeah. Trump administration record working with Republicans that made us stronger and right now, if you look around the world, you see chaos. And a lot of that, in my view, has been driven by the okay. Biden administration's uh, weakness. I have to leave it here because we are out of time. Senator, good to have Margaret, you here. Margaret, good to be here. Thank we'll you. We'll be back in a moment. <clears throat> Excuse me.